Welcome to Electron Online and now let's take a look at a practical example of how to apply standard deviation of a random variable. So here we have uh, an example of what a tire company could look like as far as their production of tires and the quality of tires. For example, let's say that we have two different companies, each is trying to produce a 30,000 mile tire. In other words, they pretty well guarantee that the tire will last 30,000 miles. If not, bring it back and we'll replace it or give you the value for the missing miles. So here you can see a distribution, which is a normal distribution. Let's say that these companies produce a million tires of a particular type every year. And so you can see that if you produce a large quantity of something, your distribution will look fairly normal. This particular company, you can see that the average mileage you get out of a tire, even though it's rated at 30,000 miles, the average mileage a person will get from the tire is 40,000 miles, and the standard deviation is equal to 2,000 miles. I just made up the numbers to show you how we use these numbers, which means that plus or minus one standard deviation, the mileage is between 38,000 and 42,000, plus or minus two standard deviations is 36,000 and 44,000, and plus or minus three standard deviations is 34,000 to 46,000. In other words, when we go up to three standard deviations, 99% of all the tires, 99.7% of all the tires produced will have a mileage range between 34,000 and 46,000. And if the tire is guaranteed to go 30,000 miles, you're going to have a lot of happy customers and no one returned their tire saying it didn't last long enough. And so the company will do well and make good profit. Let's say we have a second tire company. They also produce 30,000 mile tires, but they're their manufacturing process is not as reliable and they have a much wider standard deviation. Let's say that their standard deviation is 10,000 miles. With other words, if you go plus or minus one sigma, sigma, that means the tires will then last between 30 and 50,000 miles. 50,000 miles is great, but 30,000 miles is getting up to the limit of what you're guaranteeing. Two sigma, tires will only last from 20,000 to 60,000, and three sigma from 10,000 to 70,000. So the question is, how many of your tires, let's say you produce a million tires, how many will not last as much as 30,000 miles or less than 30,000 miles? So if we divide the graph into these regions of one sigma, two sigma, and three sigma, so this is plus or minus one sigma, plus or minus two sigma, plus or minus three sigma, and also in this direction, minus one sigma, minus two sigma, and minus three sigma, notice that the amount of tires that will go from the average to plus one sigma is 34.1 percent and from from uh, average to minus one sigma is 34.1 percent the amount of tires that will last from plus one sigma to plus two sigma is 13.6 percent and from one sigma to uh, my, from minus one to minus two sigma would also be uh, 13 13.6 percent and the amount of tires that last from two to three sigma is 2.2%, and here that would be also 2.2%. And then anything beyond that, beyond plus or minus three sigma, is only about 0.1 or 0.15%, 0.15%, and 0.15%, which is almost negligible. But now imagine that if you add these together, 13.6, 2.2, that would be uh, let's see, that would be 15.8 plus another 0.1, that would be 50.9, or round it off, that would be about 16% of all the tires would have a mileage that would be less than the rated mileage, less than 30,000. What's 16% of, of, a, of a million? Well, that's 160,000 tires. So you'd be selling tires and 160,000 of them out of a million, the people would not get the 30,000 miles out of it and they would be coming back for some return on their money because it didn't last as long as they were advertised to last. And on top of that, you'll have unhappy customers that may not want to come back. So understanding your manufacturing process, understanding the amount of chips you put in a bag, the amount of how, long, how many hours a light bulb lasts, by graphing out the distribution of the variable that you're looking for, by understanding the sigma, the standard deviation, and how big or how small it is, and how that shows the variation in your process, you can really get a handle on what's really going on in the workplace. And so that's why using standard deviation is so important to understand how many of your product will fall within the acceptable limits and how many, will, how many will not fall within the acceptable limits. And all we have to do is sample a relatively small number out of the total population to get that nice normal distribution. And so that's how we end up doing that. And that's what we mean by standard deviation 
and how we use it.